Well, hello there you guys. Thanks so much for coming back. This episode is going to be an evening episode, so I'm recording at night. It's still light-ish out, but it's uh, it's been dark all day, so I haven't been getting a whole lot of light in the room that I'm in, so uh, this is the best we can do, but hopefully the content is going to be worth it. Up until today, we've covered quite a lot of vocabulary, everyday expressions, the kind of pragmatic language that you need in everyday life sort of settings, pronunciation, all those things that you need to communicate more effectively, but we have never ever covered grammar. I'm speaking about the fun sort of grammar that can lead you to analyze the language, use it playfully and feel like you own it with a lot more freedom and a lot more instruments at your disposal. So hopefully that's what today's episode is going to help you do. Right, so first things first, a quick set of basics. What's a part of speech? Good question. That's what you're gonna need to know to look at grammar and know what to do with it. So uh, a part of speech is a kind of word, right? And there's different types of words, various kinds of words. They all have their purpose. They all have their function in a sentence. The four major parts of speech, the first one being a noun a word that stands for an object, like a bottle of water or a phone, uh, or an idea, a phenomenon, like life, love. The other thing that it might stand for is a person, a guy, a girl, a woman. They're all nouns, are they not? As for the second type, it's going to be a verb, so actions like run, talk, speak, eat, whatever it is that you do, that's going to be a verb. Third one is going to be an adjective, that is the type of word that describes nouns. A powerful woman, an affordable phone, a happy life, etc, etc. So happy, affordable, powerful, those are all adjectives. And then finally, we got adverbs, that is the words that describe actions, right? So how can you talk? You can talk slowly, you can talk loudly. Whatever it is, it is an adverb, right? You can run fast. You can love gently, uh, you can snore loudly. How do I know which is which? Good question! You can look at the form of the word and you should always focus on the final part of the word. The suffix is what we call it. You see the suffix er, chances are you're looking at a noun and it's quite likely that you're looking at a person noun, reader, a drinker, a runner, so they don't all have to be someone's professions, someone's occupations. It could actually be any person that does a certain action. The question is when to use such nouns. What I want to do is I want to show you an example. I want to show you a clip from my very favorite show, Seinfeld. I'm not even sure which one I like better, Friends. Sex in the City, Seinfeld. I'm definitely gonna uh, vote Seinfeld. It's the best show ever. And I'm gonna show you a clip from Seinfeld and we're gonna talk about this one possibility, when to use such nouns. What's he like? He's nice, bit of a close talker. A what? You'll see. <laughs> hey! This is Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Hello. Hello, Aaron. So how long are you folks in town? Oh. <laughs> Three more days. Three more days and then we're off to Paris. I love France. I was just there last year. In fact, you know, I still have an envelope full of French francs. I'll give them to you. Right, so we got a talker, not just any talker. There's an adjective that describes the talker, a close talker. Now, English is the most compact, analytical, most practical language you'll ever, ever encounter. Close talker is essentially a person that whenever they're speaking to you, they're going to stand a lot closer to you than you might prefer. So you just sort of condense it into this one combination of two words, a close 
talker. I've heard about you. <laughs> What's funny is, um, on this very same show, the writers of the show uh, used the very same principle numerous times throughout the show, the 10 seasons. And what happens is um, they use the same word, talker, and then they add to it a different adjective that gives it a different characteristic. But again, it's very compact and practical. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, well, that was a good one. Well. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah. 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 You know that uh, Leslie's in the clothing business? She's a designer. Oh. <laughs> what is that? It's the puffy shirt. Look at it, huh? What do you think? Is it cool or what? Why are you wearing this now? Why am I wearing it now? I'll tell you why I'm wearing it now. Because the low talker asked me to, that's why. And I said yes. Do you know why? Because I couldn't hear her. So this one's also super logical, right? You get low, which stands for uh, low volume, and therefore a low talker is someone who doesn't speak loud enough. Or um, the opposite of that might be a loud talker. And then you might get a slow talker, a fast talker. There's all kinds of things that you might um, create on your own and uh, notice it and use it yourself. <laughs> Let's look at another typical one, a reader, a fast reader. Yeah, a, a lot of times it'll focus on pace, on, on, on like the speed that you go at, slow reader. Um, a voracious reader. So someone who cannot get enough, they practically devour, absorb the books, right? So they read so much, uh, they like eat them up those books. My mom was a voracious reader. She was homeschooled, read all the time. Winston Churchill, who was not only a voracious reader, but an extraordinarily talented writer. So it describes a typical behavior for someone, not just this one-time thing, but something that you will typically think um, of that person because of what they normally do. Um, another one would be a believer. So someone who believes, and you might believe in so many things, right? So in God, uh, in, uh, in love, in second chances, in any sort of philosophy. And then I saw her face, I'm a believer. Let's take it to another level for a second. Um, here's a super short clip from Friends, the show that I also love and cherish, and my goodness. Um, yeah, I'm a TV series lover. Uh, anywho, here's a super brief clip from Friends. Let's go. All right, listen, I have one. Janice likes to cuddle at night, mm. which, you know, I'm all for. But, uh, you know, when you want to go to sleep, you want some space. So, uh, you know, how do I tell her that without, you know? Oh, honey, I'm sorry. We can't help you there because we're cuddly sleepers. <laughs> now, what is to cuddle? To cuddle is to hug and kind of um, squeeze yourself against the person that you're sleeping next to. So, like, um, you do this, and you kind of, we also call that spooning. There's, like, the scooping, sort of spooning thing going on. And a person who spoons, um, when they sleep next to someone, we will call them a spooner. Uh, and it might be positive or negative, depending on how you say it. But they are cuddlers. So someone who's a sleeper, what kind of sleeper? Cuddly sleeper. Cuddly, an adjective like lucky, shiny, rainy. You cuddle, there's cuddling, you're a cuddly sleeper. And one, <laughs> two, three. Now, what are some other kinds of sleepers? A, a light sleeper is someone who'll wake up easily, right? So there's this lightness to the way they sleep, the way they experience sleep. Uh, it's not like heavy, it's light. You might say a heavy drinker who drinks heavily, drink verb, heavily adverb, a heavy drinker, adjective plus noun. That guy, he's a, he's quite a heavy drinker, so you, you might want to be careful 
uh, you might not have it in you to have as many drinks as he does. You'll get a daydreamer, someone who daydreams, so you don't actually see dreams while sleeping at night. Like sort of imagine things and, and fantasize about stuff and you're not actually fully present, like when you're at work or at school, at university, wherever it might be. So, um, someone who daydreams is a daydreamer. Someone who dreams a lot is a dreamer. You may say, hey, hey, I'm a dreamer. So I want to show you this clip um, where they don't actually use the word that I want to introduce, but I want you to try and think of the word, what they would describe this person as. What noun that comes from a verb would you personally use to describe this person's behavior? No one believe me, I'm Mr. Funny to you, Mr. Funny. Whoa! Oh, sorry, Tommy. <laughs> What's in the cup, Ross? Um, what is in the cup? Okay, it's coffee. Ice coffee? Tell me it's ice coffee. It, it's hot. Hot coffee! <laughs> you idiot! You gonna spill hot coffee all over me, huh? What are you, just a big, dumb, stupid, doofy idiot with a doofy idiot hairdo? Huh? <laughs> huh? Finalize, I'm gonna introduce a couple of sentences that all include verbs, and I want you to restructure the sentences with the use of the noun that comes from that verb. And that way sort of naturalize that sentence and make it sound even, even better. Uh, that girl right there, she runs so fast. Like that's what she typically does. How would you describe that person? And this friend of mine, she talks and talks and talks and talks and that's all she ever does. So much talking. My goodness, so talkative. How would you describe that person with one word that's a noun? What are they? What is this person? That new boyfriend of hers, she tells me that he's so great at listening. That's just so rare, you know, good listening skills. He's such a great, what? That girl right over there on that dance floor, she, look at her moves. The way she moves, that is, ah, fabulous. I wanna dance like that. So I'm gonna come up to her and I'm gonna compliment her. I'm gonna say, I envy you so much. I'm so jealous. You are such a, how do you continue the sentence? Now, does that mean that that person actually works as a dancer and that's how they earn their money? No, not at all. So we focus on the action. It doesn't have to be a profession. It doesn't have to refer to what this person does for a living. The context will tell you. You're such a great dancer, it doesn't mean that they dance for a living. You want to make that compliment. You might say, you dance so well, or I love your moves, I love your groove, but you're such a great dancer is like the most typical combination ever and you want to go for compact, common, typical in a good sense. He's the greatest dancer. He's the greatest dancer. So then think of ways to describe yourself, right? Think of those actions that are typical of you. So for instance, me, I am a voracious reader. I am not much of a dreamer. I'm more of a doer now. Uh, I am a an overthinker. I overthink a lot. Not just think, but overthink, and that doesn't serve me. I am a good listener. I can be a good talker if I know what I'm talking about. I am a water drinker, a coffee drinker, and uh, a wine drinker. Not much of a whiskey drinker. Um, I am an, an ice cream lover. I am uh, a slow runner. I am, there's so many things. So what are you? Cause I'm a picker, I'm a grinner, I'm a lover, and I'm a sinner. I play my music in the sun. I'm a joker, I'm a smoker, I'm a midnight toker.